and welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you the basics of using SoftGrade 5 with your OWC Thunder Bay 4 storage solution. We've already installed SoftGrade 5 on our computer and are using four brand new drives in the Thunder Bay. For information on how to install drives into your Thunder Bay, please refer to the manual that came with your Thunder Bay 4 or check out our separate instructional video. Once you have the drives installed in your Thunder Bay, you can hook it up to your computer and turn it on. If these are brand new drives, you may get a bunch of warnings that a drive can't be read. That's okay. Just click ignore, then open up SoftGrade. On the left is a list of all the drives attached to your computer. Brand new drives like the ones we installed will have a question mark over the lower corner of their icon. Drives formatted using Apple's disk utility will have a small Apple logo. Right-click on each drive's tab and select Blink Disk Light to flash the indicator corresponding to each drive in the Thunder Bay. This is especially useful if you have multiple Thunderbolt devices and you don't want to get them mixed up. Once you've found which drive tabs correspond to the ones in your Thunder Bay, select those drives, right-click on them, and select Certify. You'll be given an option to adjust the number of test patterns and whether or not to do a random access test. Click the Certify button and confirm it. Enter an administrator's password if you need to. SoftRaid will now check your drive for potential faults and failures. This is a lengthy process and can take several hours to complete. You may wish to just let it run overnight. Once the drives have been certified, we can now create the RAID itself. The first step is to initialize these drives with the soft RAID drivers. Select all the drives you wish to include in the RAID, then right-click on one and select Initialize. Confirm that you'd like to initialize the drives and the process will continue. Once a drive is initialized and tested, you'll notice that the badge in the lower right corner of the icon changes to a soft rate icon. You can now make sure the drives you want to add to the volume are selected, then right-click and select New Volume. In the New Volume window, you should see all the drives you selected in the list on the left, and their corresponding lights should be blinking on the Thunder Bay. Select the type of RAID setup you'd like. In this instance, we're making a RAID 5. Give the volume a name. We're calling ours RAID 5, but you can name yours whatever you want. Next, select the file system you want. In most cases, HFS Plus with journaling selected should work fine. Optimization and volume safeguard can be customized, but the default settings will work under most circumstances. Finally, select your volume size. Clicking the Max Size button will give your RAID the highest capacity it can handle, which is most common for this kind of setup. Double-check to make sure only the lights for the drives you want as part of this RAID are selected. Then, click Create. After a moment or two, your new RAID unit should be seen and can be used just like any other external drive. If you're using your SoftRaid device on a computer that you're not always at, such as with a server or a remote workstation, you may want to set up email notifications. These notifications will let you know if a drive in your array goes bad, is likely to go bad, is almost full, or any of a number other things. To set this up, first go to the SoftRaid menu and select Email Notification. In the window that opens, click Enable in the upper right corner. We can now put in the name and email address that we want any soft raid warnings to come from. For the name, we're going to make the name soft raid alert so it'll stand out in our email list. We've also set up a Gmail account that we'll use just for these alerts. If you've got multiple machines that have soft raid volumes you're watching, you can fill in the physical location of the computer, but for most cases, that's probably not necessary. Next, click on the Outgoing Server tab. 
Here, you'll want to fill in your username, password, and server information for the email address you entered on the previous page. Depending on the mail service you're using, the Configure For drop-down may already have automatic settings. If you're not using one of these services, you'll need to enter the information manually. Next, select the Notifying Events tab. You'll see a list of different events that will trigger an email notification to be sent, such as a failed drive. Check all the events that you want to be informed of. Uncheck those that you don't want to trigger a warning. Similarly, the Alarms tab contains other items that aren't emergencies but can still trigger a warning, such as low capacity on your RAID. Again, check the ones you want to receive warnings about and uncheck the ones you don't. The final tab is the list of email addresses that you want to send any warnings to. This could include sending an email to your work address, your home address, your phone, or any combination of these. Once you've entered the addresses you want to receive emails, you can click the Send Test Email button to make sure that all your email settings are correct. You'll receive an email at each address if you did it correctly. If not, go back and check all your server settings. Once everything is working, you can click Save, and anytime SoftRaid detects a problem with one of your RAID volumes, you'll get an email at the address or addresses you've specified. In the event that one of the drives in your SoftRaid Level 1, 1 plus 0, 4, or 5 volumes goes bad, you'll need to replace it. First, open the SoftRaid application from the Finder, the Dock, or the Menu Bar. When SoftRaid opens, you'll notice at least one drive will have a warning badge as well as text indicating what kinds of errors the drive is having. Click on the drive to find which RAID volume it's part of. Then, right-click the volume on the right and select the option to unmount it. Next, right-click the failed drive and select Blink Disk Light. This will show you which drive is the one that's failed. In our case, it's drive C. You can now shut off the Thunder Bay, quit SoftRaid, and replace the failed drive. Once the failed drive is replaced with a new one, you can turn your Thunder Bay back on again. You'll likely get a message about a disk not being readable. Just click Ignore and open up SoftRaid. You'll see that now your RAID volume is missing a disk. That's fine, that's the disk we removed. You'll also notice that there's a drive with a question mark badge. This is the brand new drive we just installed. We need to add this new drive to our array to replace the one we removed. To do this, first right-click on the drive and select Initialize. Once the drive has been initialized, you can right-click on your RAID volume and select Add Disk. You'll be presented with a list of soft RAID formatted drives that aren't part of a RAID already. Since the only one that fits those criteria is the one that we just installed and formatted, that's the one we choose. Just select it, click Add, then Confirm. Now the new drive is added to the RAID volume and the whole unit will start to rebuild itself. Depending on how full the RAID was when the drive failed, this could take several hours. Once the volume is rebuilt, you can continue using it like you did before.